Welcome to Simple Smart Investing Podcast, brought to you by Corey Schrader, the founder of Black Creek Wealth Management, a registered investment advisory firm out of Jacksonville, Florida. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and, unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. What is Simple Smart Investing? This show is designed to help our listeners think differently about financial topics and investing. Corey has over 15 years of complex trading, investment management, and comprehensive financial planning he wants to share to serve others. The landscape of investing is changing, and to be successful, Corey wants to introduce to his listeners alternative thinking around their investing so they can make impactful decisions to work towards their goals quickly and safely as possible. Thank you for tuning in. And now, let's get to the show. All right. It looks like we got some uh, recording on here. This is great. So welcome to the first ever episode of Simple Smart Investing. My name is Corey Schrader. I'm going to be your host. I am super excited to be launching this the Simple Smart Investing podcast. Basically, the focus here is how do we look at things and challenge the status quo of investing? And why is that important? Because uh, you follow the herd, you're probably going to get the same results as the herd. And my uh, my goal here is just to get you a little bit more assets and abundance uh, and even some financial peace, as uh, good old Dave Ramsey would probably say. Uh, I'm not going to talk about him today, but I do want to get into today's podcast, which is using more than retirement to get what you want. What do I actually mean by that? I'm talking about more than just looking at your retirement assets uh, to actually start thinking about the future today. Most people are just told, hey, let's go ahead and save. Let's keep that party going. Just go ahead and use your company match and just put as much as you can in. Well, I'm here to tell you, you don't necessarily need to be a millionaire to get everything you want, especially when it comes to retirement. Again, this is a little bit different than what you're going to hear out there, but I'm going to back this up over the next couple of podcasts and talk to you about why I, uh, I believe you don't necessarily need to be a millionaire. It's your lifestyle is not going to uh, cater around that lifestyle. So we'll talk about that, but not today. So again, today we're going to be talking about how do I use more than retirement? What does that actually mean? So how much is enough when you actually look at retirement? Well, again, want to look at what do we want to be in the future? What are we shooting for? And I'm going to introduce you today with the power of leverage and using your current assets, i.e. your real estate and some other things uh, to really look at what can I get today, given that the housing market has absolutely gone on a tear. And a lot of us have also been paying down those low interest rate um, mortgages that we have. And now there's a little bit of a buffer in there that we can use to our advantage to actually scale up our assets and build more of that net worth. Or like I said, get what you want today for what you're looking at in retirement. So Let's look at that for a second. So when you're talking about your budget and you're talking about what do I want to do uh, in the future, if you're using, let's just say 3%, let's say you have 100,000, that's about $3,000. Let's say you want to add a little bit of some income or you know what? I want to talk about how do I rebuild my kitchen? How do I do another bathroom? Hey, Corey, I'm actually looking at, I want to move to another state or I want to move to a nice area uh, in the future, but that's way down the road. Well, I got news for you. You can actually use some of your assets in your actual equity, embedded equity in your house today to get what you want. So let's talk about that. So when we look at home equity, what does that actually mean? So if you look at the value of your house, go on Zillow. I'm not a huge proponent of Zillow being that I used to be a residential appraiser. However, it's a good round estimate to use. But go on to Zillow, see how much your house is worth. Okay, that's if you were to go to the market today, I could potentially get this value. Okay, not going to get into the, the nitty gritty of if is it accurate or not. Let's just use it for an example. Let's say your house is worth 300000 You owe... 150,000 on your house. Well, the equity is the difference between what your house is worth from what you actually paid for it. And I'm not going to include transaction costs, brokerage fees and all this, but your net 
value is 150,000. So you have 50% equity in your house. Well, the fun news is that a bank will actually lend you up to 70, even sometimes 90% loan to value of your property. Now I'm going to caveat this real quick. For my extremely excited people, doing 90% loan to equity, I'm not a huge fan of, but again, to each his own, you determine how much risk you want to take on, but you can do, let's say 70% loan to value, which means you're still going to have 30% equity in your house when you take money out. Or let's say you do a home equity line of credit. Again, that's something else we could talk about. But let's say you do take money out and you take out 20% of the value of your house. That's $60,000 on a $300,000 house. Now you're going to owe $210,000, which means you still have $90,000 in equity to have in the house, which the bank likes, right? You still got excess value that they want. Well, that means you've taken out $60,000. Well, what is $60,000 on 300? That's 20%, right? Well, that's actually what for an investment property or even a secondary home, a bank's going to require that you need to put down to buy it, which means you can move that equity to that vacation house, to that retirement home that you wanted. And that's for a $300,000 house. Maybe you want to do a $200,000 house. Well, now you don't have to take out as much, right? Well, you're using that equity to basically pay off or not pay off, but to use that to buy into another property that you wanted 20 years from now. You can get it today, right? Great. Well, Corey, that means that I'm going to take money out of my, my property and that's not a good thing. Well, I will tell you this. Let's say everything goes south and you need to sell your house. What's going to happen when you sell your house? Your equity in your house is going to pay off that house because now you've sold it for 300,000. You owe 210, that means you still have 90,000 again, not factoring in brokerage costs. This is how the rich people do it. This is what people look at when they say how can I get more because real estate values continue to go up and then more equity is built on other things. Oh, and by the way, you can actually use your new house if you don't want to necessarily be in that new house or that vacation home. Maybe you can do VRBO. Maybe you can even do Airbnb. Well, you can actually pay for your loan through that rental. I know people doing this. I've helped people build this. I've helped people take money out and buy properties and do this and scale and now, not only do you move that 20%, but you have the real estate that's actually growing. So now you're building equity on equity, people. This is how people get wealthy. Have you ever played the game Monopoly? This is how it works. So I, I really want to challenge everyone to start thinking about retirement a little bit differently. And it's really going to come down to what do you want your future to look like? If you can't see what it looks like, you need to sit down with somebody like myself that can help you picture that. Now, I encourage you, talk to a certified financial planner, CFP. I have it. If you can work with someone who does that and does money management as well, like myself, who has a chartered financial analyst designation, sit down and talk to them because they do have a little bit more education on how to invest and in, in, in scale these kind of things. Okay. So, like I said, there's a lot of new and unique ideas that a lot of these, you know, just they're just not out there. So, I want to make sure that you're using this information to benefit and take advantage of it. I didn't even bring up the concept of looking at life insurance as well and taking out loans there. If you have a whole life policy and you're able to take out loans, this too can also be a great way to use leverage. Well, I'm going to have some people out there that are going to say, well, Corey, real estate doesn't go up forever. What about these rising interest rates? All these kinds of things, right? Well, again, you want to look at that and you want to run a calculation. I actually have real estate amortization tables that I run for my investors and my clients where we look at this and we say, okay, well, I can afford this with this kind of interest rate. Corey, how do I do this? What is that type of thing? I will tell you this. And I, I have my own residential appraising business for 10 years. And I used to do not just rentals, but I used to also do appraisals for banks. Real estate is one of those things where we are running out of land. 
we are continuing to see an undersupply. Some of that will keep real estate prices higher. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't see a 10, 20 percent adjustment to high prices. However, when we see like what we've seen over the last year and a half where interest rates have gone up a little bit, but our home prices have gone up by 40 percent. Now they've come down about 10, 15 percent. We're still up almost one to one and a half to two percent a month in appreciation. That is insane, people. You go back years, the average used to be about a half, maybe three quarters of a percent on a regular basis. They're going to come down to those normalized rates, but your real estate is going to continue to grow. So as I told you, I don't want to belabor this. I want to keep these short, sweet, and effective. You need to talk to somebody about retiring. You need to look at your budget. You need to make sure that if you're getting a company match, you, you do the match, but you also look at, am I saving too much? If I don't know that question, find somebody who can help me figure out that question. The more you wait, the longer you won't get what you want, and I'm all about making it, so that way you can get what you want as quickly and safely as possible. So, I hope you continue to listen. Again, Corey Schrader. I have my own firm, Black Creek Wealth Management, where I do a lot of this stuff, this podcast, Simple Smart Investing. I want to make sure that you're taken care of. Lastly, if no one's ever told you or it hasn't told you today that they care about you, please know that I do. And ultimately, I am here for any questions and concerns. I'm here to serve. Have a blessed day. I'll talk to you next time.